public <laughs> interview. I saw that. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. I did a... Oh, your, your new Thinking Aloud interview in Las Vegas. With, with Mishlove, Jeffrey Mishlove. I did a reaction video to it. It's about two hours long. Uh, and it's on YouTube. And uh, uh, some people are liking it. And they... Here. Um, they are liking it. Here. Yeah, they, they said... Uh, uh, one person actually was very grateful that I was commenting on your interview. And... Uh, I made that hard. You like them hard, so. What? I said you like those things hard. Yeah, okay. And, uh. Shall they? It's, it's, got, it's, it's, got, it's getting along. It's coming along. Uh, I've been just working on podcasting and trying to do philosophy and listen to every part of these. That's the last thing I can. And just contemplating focus on my power logos. What the hell is going on? I guess. I'm gonna call So, um. Well, we were, you know, does the power logos presuppose a knowledge of the self? We were wondering, I was wondering. If that knowledge is the knowledge of the divided line. And so we were looking at the Greek terms for the divided line. And Maybe the divided lines are where in the Brahmanity? No, in the, well, no, we were looking in the Republic. In the knowledge, come on. I want to make sure I understand it. Well, so you see how we drew an arrow from knowledge to the highest part of the divided line? That's our picture of the divided line there at the bottom. Yeah. I was wondering if 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 the does the Pablo presuppose the knowledge of the self elders. I was wondering if that knowledge is the highest knowledge of like eternity and yeah. etc. Um, yeah. the the uh, second hypothesis is the highest knowledge. Okay. Because it's the highest experience. Right. And, of course... And the question... You guys want some heat? Here, do you want any heat? you want heat? Tea? Heat? Heat. Oh. I don't know. There's butter, jam. So, yeah, it would be knowledge of, like, the idea of the good. Right? Because the first hypothesis is beyond knowledge. Right. Oh. Can you be aware of the first? Sure. But you can be aware of the first, right? Awareness, wouldn't that imply knowledge? Well, that's my, my puzzle is... Um, well... If it, can, can it be an object of, of knowledge, the first? No, he said no just now, very clearly. Oh, uh, it all depends on whether or not you're going to use the idea of knowledge in a strict way or not. <laughs> because if you do, then there are three things involved. Right, the knowing, the knower, and the process of knowing. Right. Okay. And they have to be different. Right. The three? Right, yeah, because the process, like, yeah, because it's, yeah, yeah, yeah that's like, um, uh, um, so in, if you can't use knowledge in that sense to talk about the first hypothesis, is there some way in which you can talk about knowledge with, in regards to the first? Like a certain awareness or a certain. Um, like You're you, asking the wrong person. Like, what about. Who should I ask? I never understand what people mean when they talk about awareness. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Same thing for consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. I 
and then can't you let me but get if away? you have a good idea of it I'll be very happy to hear about it but can, can you let me get away with the language for a second <laughs> <laughs> just so we can all right go ahead just so we can thank you um, just so I could get a um, an answer to that question no no do it again just so that I could get an, an answer to that question of can there be an awareness of the one? Yeah, or like, what kind of rela relationship can there be um, with the one, with uh, the first hypothesis, the one self? If it's not knowledge. What kind of relationship are you asking about? It's already separate. Right. And you're trying to trick me. Right. <laughs> Since you're starting out with the dualism. And that's bad because... Well, then we're not the first hypothesis, that's all. Not bad. So when would we be in the first hypothesis? Oh. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess... I mean, according to what you just said, right, you can never be in it because in the second hypothesis, the highest experience is, is the highest object of knowledge and that the first hypothesis is beyond, is not an object of knowledge, it's beyond knowledge. So that brings me to the self. I mean, if I understand correctly, you guys have been putting the self along with the one and the good. And so then, I have the same question. Bring the self along with it. <laughs> well, you've been... Then all you... Yeah. We, we call it the one self now. Right, okay, so... Or just the self. Well, that's that's my... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The, the self. Forget that, this That's the self. Yeah. Is that the self of the one? It can't be, right? What, what, what are you pointing no, at? Knowledge of the self, because this all started with... We wanted to know if that knowledge was the knowledge in the highest part of the divided line. There's of also self, this. How to logo three seconds of knowledge of the self. Want that. And then Pierre proceeded by saying that uh, not in the hi first hypothesis because it's not an object of knowledge, it's beyond all knowledge, and that the highest experience is in the second. And so that's where knowledge would be. Those but then, then the self that would be known would be in the second. Got any it would follow. Not um, my, I have bread. Not the oh. self of the first. You doing the first? I can get it. Is that right? This is true. You answer him. That, that would that would um, that sounds questionable to me. I I don't know. So how, so what do you see when you see knowledge of the self? What what do you make of that question? Um, that looks to me like the first hypothesis. Even. Excuse me. What's the that? that looks like the self oh I see go ahead right um, okay but the, the, the knowledge is not the knowledge is in the second hypothesis well uh, mm. so that's my so that's a great question right that's why that's kind of the the same question right, right? yeah like we I mean we're trying to make um, knowledge of the self no no well, if you're dealing with that line in black, yeah. What, what, how would you phrase it, just so if you could bring me along with it? Um, in terms of what we've been talking about mm -hmm. just now, it, um, this the self looks to me like the self of the first hypothesis. But then we have the problem of knowledge again. What problem of knowledge again? I have to keep because have to keep up with you. The problem of knowledge being uh, that uh, the, this, the first hypothesis can't be an object of knowledge because of what we just discussed, okay. the three yeah, aspects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that sentence looks like it's wrong to me. That sentence. Is that the black one? Yeah. 
that read, read it. Does the pathologos presuppose a knowledge of the self? Yeah. How can the self be known if it can't be a knowledge of the self? Oh. What do you think that statement means? Could you put it in your own words so I can see how you understand it? In my own words, I'd put it uh, as... The self being um, uh, without any uh, images, oh, without okay. any false okay. beliefs yeah. about okay. the nature of the self. Yeah. But now you were going to put in respect to that. Now go ahead. So, um, in order to have a pathologos, we first have to have. Um, a knowledge of that pure self without any beliefs so that we can have well, a false belief. See, well, that's uh, interesting. You're missing the word presuppose in that sentence. Well, it presupposes it means it's um it's it's a con it's like a condition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For there to be a false idea Say, of something, there has to be the something. It's good to have an example before us, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that guy? I forget his, his name. Uh, Jed. Do you remember him? Oh yeah. Oh. By chance, uh, do you recall the dream he had uh, that he discussed last night? Yes. Oh. Uh, would you agree he's attracted to the state of mind that he called happy? Mm -hmm. And he put other words along with it. Do you remember a couple of them? Uh, happy, floating, uh, flying. Free. Free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, that's what he thinks the self is. That's what he thinks is being himself. That's why he's attracted to it. Yeah. Agree? Agree. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, can you not, is it, does it follow that if you have a false idea of anything, it presupposes that the idea itself must be different? than the false idea of it? Yes. That's what the idea presupposes me. Yes. Right. There has to be... Say it again? There has to be something for you to have a false idea of that something. Right, right. right. See, the, the, the truly astonishing thing is why we seize on those moments and identify with it and say, that's what I want to get into, and that's the way I want to be. Yeah. Talking about the false image? Right here, right? Oh, the false image are you yeah, referencing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what there must be something very attractive and powerful about it. Yeah, so then we search back, did we not, and say, it looks like he may be imitating someone who looked truly great. Right. And, and at a... a by, but most interesting, it can only take place when you're young. You can't get a new one. You can't get a new pathologos. Right. Once you're an adult. There's something about the conditions of childhood. Right. What are they? Go ahead. Being, uh, like being under the care of your parents. Yeah, that's true. And... Um, no, no. You're dependent on it. It's your only it. reality. It's your only reality. It's your only reality. Mm -hmm. the, the milieu, the false beliefs? A childhood's world, that is their own reality, in general. The family, the, the family life. They so, don't have anything to compare it with, which is why in midwifery, uh, one of the great important shocks 
in the realm of reflection is when they get into school. They suddenly discover a new reality. Oh, yeah. Or if they live in a neighborhood and they get into some family next door that is really different, right. that'll rattle them. Oh, my God, what's going on? Mm. So, the, so, the so the person has to appear most ideal. They have to exhibit that state of mind that you want to imitate. It has to be rare. So the conditions... So, wait a minute. So therefore, if that person was that way all the time, it wouldn't produce a pathology. Is that um, seen like the ideal of the family menu, milieu? Yeah. It's like a, a spike. Sure. Sure. So it kind of, um, it's supported by everything else. And it all fits. It all fits. It all fits. So the, the reason the child has to learn the pathologos is because you're leaving out love. Because that... that you're leaving out love. Right. Because that... Because at that moment they're showing care, they're, they're showing attention. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's singularly important. Right. And it's too much to be questioned. It's too much no, no, it's to be enough. challenged. Just enough. <laughs> it's just enough. Just enough. So, Not too much. <clears throat> but what I meant was the stakes are too high. Are you saying that they're just right? It's stakes are just right where they are to produce a pathologo. <laughs> you mean not too much? Not too little? No, it's ideal. So if part so if they were a little bit less, the child might be able to challenge them? Uh, when, do, when is it possible for a child to challenge the parents' pathologos? Yeah. Only if... Like, like at that moment. Environment, if they... There, 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 there needs to be a certain development of the mind. Yeah. But that you know this guy, Judd? Yeah. Yeah. Suppose at that moment he were to say to his mother, Hey, Mom, you look more beautiful than you ever had before. How come you're saving it for this kind of moment? Because you know what? Right after it, I'm being ridiculed. How come one follows from the other? Why do you have to do that, Mom? I'm getting fucking tired of it. It's been going on my whole life. Now, why don't you own up to it? That's what you're doing. What does it take to say those things? For a five or six... See, imposition of the pathologos has to come with language. So what does it take for someone to do that? What do you think? A kid. It, it takes so much. That's why, I, that's why I was using the language of it's too much for a child to challenge. But you're saying it's just right. For a pathologos. Right. For a pathologos. Um, what does it like, take? Like, like, kind of like you said, like, if it wasn't just right, they would be able to challenge. Because the, right, one of the conditions of pathologos is that it seems so genuine, so caring, and so loving. If the next if the next day that mother would have said, Hey, Jed, you know what? I don't know why I'm doing it, and I don't know why I keep doing it. Right. But I got to apologize for ridiculing you at that time. Now, let me give you a little hot chocolate and cookies, and, uh, and now she even looks more beautiful. There'd be no problem. 
because we take the blame for the existence of... See, once we accept that as reality, we take the blame. We fit into that model. Is that what the word There must be something reason? wrong with me. Right? There must be something wrong with me for and her to do that to me. Right? So we... Un un I mean, uh, there, there must be something dreadful about me to believe that. Right. Uh, 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 oh, I'm big shit, the local stink. Uh, it'll be terrible. I've got to carry that load. But and that's reality. And whatever I was doing before is bad. No. Uh, you forget everything that came before and your memory starts now. In psychology, if they had any people there who thought, right, that would be the answer to childhood amnesia. If they had any. See, childhood amnesia is how come we only have a memory, active memory, that takes place when we're roughly uh, seven or eight, right, picks up. Why does it happen that most of our memories then are linked to early days in school? Is that when the pathologos is matured? No, it doesn't have to mature. It's complete in itself. There's no there's no growth to it. Right. And now, whenever anybody sees a situation that seems analogous to that early scene, they fit right in. Now it's their turn to ridicule someone else. It happens, and it happens quite effortlessly, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean... So, so what, what are the... What does it take to challenge the, the, path, the path logos. Reality. Huh. I mean, why are we talking about experience, an ultimate experience of the nature of reality? What, what do you mean? It's only when... Wow. Remember, Judd, that guy? Uh, it looked like he understood the, the origin of the difficulty he had, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, he's not even sure whether it's a difficulty between you and I because he may still think that state is so great and high that he may still secretly long for it. But let's put that aside. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. You mean he's, he's not, he has his doubts? The, the, only, the only thing is that you have to find similar circumstances that created the pathologist for you to see it directly going on. And now you now it's your decision whether you want to play that role or not. You have to see that. That's seeing. That's a new level of seeing. You have to go into the jungle with your sword ready. But I've known many people in the middle of the midwife talk who ended it and said, "You're trying to make me think of my parents who I love." as a bunch of horses' asses. That's what you're trying to do. I said, no, I'm not trying to do it. They are. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Never see them again. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. What, what, can I ask No, you? no, really. It comes down to that. You said reality challenges the Pardon? pathologos. You said reality challenges the pathologos. Oh, All right. So, you get the pathologos, and then you have an experience of the nature of reality, and then... No, 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 you're always... You know, I'm using the word reality in the loose sense. Okay. The everyday world. Okay. Right. In the everyday world, he's going to find situations that are similar. Right. Naturally. But you... But now the, you can test it. Right. But, like, I guess I'm wondering is, how would you ever... How, how would you ever know to be looking for the analogous situations to see your own pathologos directly if you haven't had an experience of the ultimate nature of reality that no, no. shows you how you're functioning, that shows you that you need to do that. Don't even, that's 
far too complicated. So, so reality, you meant just the normal day world. You what? So you, I'm just trying to remember. By reality, you said loosely the normal, the everyday world. So, uh, let me check with my colleague. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do, you, do you recall that discussion? Last night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Uh, was the idea that the next time he approaches someone that he might then be able to test whether or not he's going to do the same thing he's done in the past? Yeah. That's reality check. What, what prompts a person to do that? A midwife well, prompt? Because, because they're, it's natural to be attracted to certain people and it's going to happen every day. No, I mean, what prompts you to self turn around and reflect upon the pathologos? Is it a midwife talk? Uh, well, that already has been accomplished. Well, let me check. Uh, did that person happen to go through the whole process? Well, yeah, this is... <coughs> we're talking about what what are the steps that need to be taken after the, the insights and the understanding of the past scene, which Pierre said it's not enough to see the, the past and the origin of the pathologos, but you have to test it in experience. So I guess my question, I got a little <clears throat> thrown off by the word reality. I no, guess no, no, push that a little. Okay, down. so how do you think, so, like you're saying, you're saying basically that someone can care about trying to get rid of their pathologos, but not, but that's just it. They're okay with it, and then they'll just end it. Say it again. <coughs> um, <coughs> I don't know if you want me to move that a little bit farther away, because it's smoking. I don't know. But are you okay, Barbara? Hello, yes. by the way. Hi. That's very nice to see you. you. Oh, good. Uh, I guess I'm sort of trying to figure out, is it possible to get rid of your pathologos and not move on to the higher functioning questions like the, the self and the one, et cetera? Sure it is. What kind of existence of course would is. that be? Of course it is. What, 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 what kind of... So you have no false images of the self, but you don't care about You're this. bypassing a really great mystery. What's that? Go back to your original question. Uh, well, um, Eldar, what was my original question? <laughs> when I have a colleague, I need help. He won't let me. You raised the I point. Know, Is it possible to have the pathologos and then go on towards uh, gaining some greater, right. more profound state of mind. Right. Yes. Right. But you don't have to. I don't know why that doesn't fit. You don't have to. Well, I, that's why that was my question. Would, would it not necessarily follow? No. Because if you get rid of your pathologos, you're getting rid of all... Right, no, 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 no. You're not working on that assumption that we're getting rid of the pathologos. What, what, what assumption are this we This discussion on? is, if a person understands the pathologos, right, okay. has had a discussion, understands what went on, okay. under that condition and not testing it in the everyday world, can they go on to higher states of mind? Okay. Sure. Yeah. No. Like, happens all the time. Right. <coughs> this is like where you talk about people having a great enlightenment experience, good, great, give, give them a beer, uh, say congratulations, but they're going to go right back into their pathologos. Sure. Um, so yeah, that, that, that I had, that my question was different. It's, it wasn't about reflecting and, and, and the consequence of what you need to do after a midwife talk. It was about the consequences of dropping all the logos, getting rid of it. And what, what would that state be? 
Look. There are many gurus, sages, priests, rabbis, who've achieved certain profound states of mind. And they get caught with their pants yeah. down. Yeah. Right? Again and again. Yeah. That's a normal. Yeah. But, yeah. That is, you can't go on and have profound states of mind and still have an unresolved pathologue. As a matter of fact, it's inevitable. Right. So that, but that's, that's not getting rid of the pathologos. No. no. Right. Thank you. <laughs> because it's, it hasn't been addressed. It's been addressed, but it hasn't been resolved. Resolved. No. It's so interesting. You have to prove to yourself that, that you have to prove to yourself. Right. It, to me, it, it, it's, it's essential. Because all you have is an idea, well discussed, well explored, but still an idea. It, it, it looks to me, when I think about it, like getting new legs, you're like trying out your new legs, it's like, does, does this work? And then you can walk if it oh. does. <laughs> I had a friend of mine that, when I used to teach at Golden West College, I mean, this guy knew everything you could possibly think of about surfing, you know. And he used to go down to Jack's, you know, that famous place, and he knew all the boards, and he knew all the people, and he knew everything about surfing. Oh, by the way, he never got in the water. Oops. What? <laughs> right. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> doesn't know how to surf. <laughs> so anyhow, I, I uh, took a walk with him down at the pier and I pushed him off the, 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 <laughs> off the pier. <laughs> and now he's a surfer. <laughs> The body surfer because he had no board at the moment when he was yes, off. Yes, oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. I just remembered that. Yeah, 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 Unless Pierre yeah, threw yeah. the board. <laughs> yeah. So, it, uh, going by that, going by that uh, analogy, do you, um, does that imply that it takes a leap? To of course, it takes courage. To to stay with your understanding. Yeah, you got to match it. Is that courage, by the way? To stay with your understanding? Yeah. Yes and no, though, right, Pierre? Huh? Yes and no, though, according hey, to the Republic. I like right? that. Why yes and no? Well, because according to the Republic, you have to uh, keep keep the... You, well, you have to keep what? have a faith in the... in the what the lawgivers... The only thing that's dangerous is what the lawgivers say that's dangerous, which is to have a false image of reality. So you have to hold on to what the nature of reality is, one perfect divine, right? And so it's not only what you're saying, which is to go with your understanding, it's also a kind of meditation by recollection, would you say? Something along that line? Although, I, I will accept correction on that. What do you think, Pierre? Well, uh, is, is it a re-experience or is it just a... Well, see, that, see the, the issue, though, uh, the issue on, in the Republic on that is that uh, throughout the entire Republic, and in all kinds of spiritual systems, oh, that's a, that's a they pick on one thing as man's basic problem. What do you think it is? Um, the senses? What about them? I have some. Being affected by them. What? Uh, being, being um, affected and moved by them, rather than. Of course, you're moved by your senses. So what? Rather than going your own way. Well, the other part of the quote that I forgot is that you have to maintain the nature of what you uh, the lawgivers 
say to be the nature of reality through pleasure, pain, desire, and fear. Right. Right? And that's in a way related to right. the point you made, right? Right. So what, whatever the... No, no. How can you use what was just said to help you with your question? Um, and my question. Uh, well, it, it adds to the idea of courage and understanding that you have to hold on to your understanding through all those sufferings, uh, through pain, pleasure, and whatever sense um, senses get in the way. Regardless of all of that, still holding on to the understanding and then testing it in experience. Well, you're right, but you don't see it. Go back. In every spiritual system, what is the sin that they think man is a victim of, regardless of what spiritual system you're in? Sin. The mind? I know. Poker. Is it the mind? Poker. No. No, you go. How about uh, thoughts and the mind? Uh, I'm not against them. How will that answer? <laughs> is that what they say is man's sin? <laughs> Isn't that what they say is man's sin? Hey, have you ever known a Christian? Yeah. Ever known a Muslim? Yeah. What do they think is evil? People. When they do what? When they whistle in the dark? Uh, when they lust for women. And oh! I never lust for women. Oh! Is that called pleasure? Yeah. Ah. You think that's equally true among Jews? Yeah. And Christians? Yeah. Definitely. And Buddhists? They think? Probably. Grasp yeah. and And desire is the problem? Mm -hmm. Oh, so they all agree. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear what Barbara said? How can you apply what she said to this? I'm not sure. That's right. See? <laughs> you mean to add pleasure to the list of things to, to to not let your understanding be shaken even by pleasure the hell did he say do you know what he said no. I, don't, I don't either we Something both are puzzled about pleasure. what you just said so you have to clarify it for both of well, us we were talking about what is courage right yeah. and how does it fit into challenging your your pathologos and then I was saying that you have to stick with your understanding of uh, of the midwifery why talk. apples fall off a tree no of, of the midwifery talk and oh. what you've seen about yourself oh um, it's amazing isn't it you can't use what you said yeah Agreed. well you won't let me I, I'm getting there huh? I'm getting there no, I know it. That's why I'm going to encourage you. So, um, <clears throat> see, maybe, maybe if you could ask Barbara again, maybe it would help again. Okay. <coughs> because it undermines all religions <coughs> in one sweep. And it makes Plato distinctively different from all spiritual systems. Barbara. Yes. Uh, what was that line again? Well, and, there were and two parts to it since one, I have a very the, bad memory. Which part would you like? Uh, 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 the one that includes pleasure and how does it fit into what we're talking about. Okay. You sure you don't want the other part? I'll well, take all of it. I'll take all of it. If he says, well, I mean, if you're maintaining through pleasure, pain, desire, and fear, uh, and, and I think it's even that you have a belief 
that only what the lawgivers say to be feared is to be feared. And that's to have in the leading part of the soul a false image about the nature of reality. That's what's to be feared. Only that. How does that relate <coughs> to your understanding that you gain in midwifery? Mm. Well, that's... That's what... The, the purpose of midwifery is to get rid of that... Uh, what that? False idea of what the self is. Mm -hmm. I think you need some help. Yeah. You gave up the point. Well, I'm I'm waiting for the point about pleasure still. Well, I, 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 I did say that you have to maintain what you have to maintain a certain vision of the nature of reality through pleasure, pain, desire, and fear. I pleasure, pain, design. Hey, David. You escaped your house guests and came for philosophy. <laughs> All right. We're glad to see you. Hi, David. Is there... I was wondering... Did I miss something in my account? Did you account? recall uh, what Dad <clears throat> went through last night regarding being uh, in a yes. happy state? Uh, no. Mm. Yes, in principle. Mm. Yes, in principle. I, I, had, I had this feeling, but... Um, what's in principle that I missed? Here, do you want to see something? Mm. Yeah. All set? Yep. Watch. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> but that... What do you want to know? Did, did you lose sense of the self? <laughs> While you were having pleasure, you, drinking coffee? You can't use what Barbara said. You see. These are those egg things that Julie brought? Yeah, oh, you got one. Okay. Oh, Good. that end of the table. Pierre. Pierre. Well, you, you're Ooh. maintaining... Last, last night, you saw Jed in his, what would have been a happy, inspired state. Would that be considered pleasure? Yeah. Inside scramble base. Uh, uh, I just wanted to see that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's yeah. But was it a true pleasure or what it, did he have to it give? It wasn't the self. It wasn't the self. That's a good question because uh, it was a pleasurable state of mind and experience. But <coughs> but it he lost it lost sight of reality uh, when he was in it he lost sight of self well, what was to that answer to that answer to that come on no uh, got what's, close what's wrong? but what what's wrong what would have been what reality did he lose sight of the nature of the his self. But that's pretty general. In particular, mm -hmm. can you recall what it was that he gave up? <coughs> um, uh, genuine learning and understanding. The example with uh, him studying music. And he replaced it with a what? What was he replacing with that was he described as happy? Right, inspiration. Would that be considered a pleasurable state? Yeah. But what does that, how does that relate to learning anything? If you learn by inspiration, what's going to be the result? Well, it's, I mean, for one thing, it's it's not reliable. It's kind of like waiting for the wind to <laughs> to come, and then you'll get into what you're into. So he's waiting for some kind of pleasure to decide whether he's learned something or or to learn something or. <clears throat> Sorry, Wait a minute. Um, I I, I lost that? it. Uh, yeah, I yeah. lost the point. Yeah. Why did you give up your answer? Yeah. 
Which one? The first one that you gave when she went through these questions. Well, I was just waiting to see what else she would say. You mean the one about um, uh, it, that state of mind taking him away from the reality? You forget what you offered as an answer. Maybe. <laughs> I'm going to have to be the person who remembers me with the worst memory in history. What's that? You offered the idea of the self. Yeah. Did you not? You did. Okay, in case you didn't remember. Uh, how is the idea of the self related to reality? Oh. Uh. As close as you can, as close as it can get. Oh, oh, so then when Barbara mentioned this term reality, uh, what might you substitute? Self. Oh. oh. Hmm. Uh, what difference does that make? Well, uh, it's it's more it's more uh, more personal. It's more true. Closer to the heart. Mm. I go higher to higher. Engage her. What do you mean? Coffee. Itself is a higher notion than reality. Reality is being. Right, it's higher. It's higher as well. Reality is higher than the highest. <clears throat> so. Than self? No, no, the oh. opposite way, Gina. Is self oh, is okay. higher I than just reality. Didn't hear it. So you're holding on to self through pleasure and pain. Yeah, it won't escape me. Yeah, yeah holding on. Holding on. Desire. Is that that grasping word? <clears throat> I just was wondering. I if don't it's... think so. I mean, it, I was just joking, playing off of his oh. idea of grasping the self. Right. It seemed like it was <clears throat> not right. <laughs> what was the word in the Republic holding on to? I, you know, I don't know that that, that, that was the word in the Republic holding on to. Um, because if what your concern is to not have a false image of the nature of reality, Right, then I don't know that you hold on to. Yeah, there's some more pastries down here. That belief. You know, yeah. I, I just don't know. I don't know. A, these, these are stuffed with beautiful eggs. The one you saw was not a representative here. Okay. You may still not want it on the one hand, but okay. on the other hand. Okay. See? See? She's offering pleasure. Pleasure, I am. <laughs> right? Right now, she's offering pleasure, you know. I am, I am. In the box. Grab one of the, those are clean for pleasure. <laughs> right. So, if you and cut this, it's And that's out. Okay. I'll give you my second demonstration. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Drink the coffee. Right. Mm, tricky. Okay. How about that? It's not very small, but you can work on it. Just put some more egg in there. <laughs> Here's a fork. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Oh, the reason I so are you going to ask him like, what's he doing while he's undergoing that pleasure? Hold on to I think I did. I, I'm not denying that I used the language. Sure. I'm just wondering if it was correct. Hold on. Excuse me. Hold on. And so, so, so is that an example of uh, Plato's um, quote? Of course. I'm sorry, what was that? Plato's what? Quote. The courage quote. 
Yeah. Right? About holding through pleasure, pain, desire, fear. Yeah, yeah. Somebody ought to. Could you pass me the Republic? From Is that a, is that a Rouse down Yes. Yeah. It is Rouse. <coughs> Looks, I mean, it looks pretty easy. <laughs> I wouldn't do it if it were work. <laughs> what do you have to know? The self. The self. What about it? Look at the question. Is keep the always keep the point, the major point in mind. To quote Barbara News, it's the antidote, it's called the antidote to pleasure and pain and suffering. Mm. The self is the antidote? What is the antidote? And pleasure is the greater problem than suffering or pain. So, and he gives a beautiful description in the second book. Of the dangerous part? Yeah. So what are you calling the antidote? Or um, actually, it's, it's, nature it's, in, it's in the fourth book. The, um, that, that I have what here. Are you the calling the na what are you calling the antidote? I mean, do it again. You said the antidote. Yes, it's an antidote. The quote? That's correct. Okay. You got it. The quote is the antidote. Mm -hmm. Does that mean courage? Say it. Uh, uh, it means when like, you get poisoned, the cure is the antidote. I mean, what I mean is that co quote was about courage, right? Right? Yeah. So, is that, you're saying courage is the antidote? Like, well, right? it's more specific than, yes, yes, but it's more specific than that. Right, right the whole quote together. Yeah. There's different points in the quote. Mm. I was just trying See, to boil the, it down. The question is, uh, real fun, uh, do you ever have thoughts? Yeah. Oh, oh, do they sometimes accompany actions? Yes. Do you remember my old friend Harry Drovidovich McGee? I never met him, but yeah, I've yeah. heard you talk about him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He got this beautiful girl, so and he made love to her, right? He was very pleased with the whole thing. And we had coffee. And much to my surprise, he never made love to her, though he insisted he did. What? Isn't that astonishing? That's an interesting story. Yeah. How, how's that possible? <laughs> well, it turns out that this happens all the time. How so? Oh, 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 uh, perhaps I should add more to the story. Yes. Okay, okay. I said, uh, while you were making love to her, uh, where was your mind? <laughs> he said, oh, I, I was thinking. I said, what are you thinking about? And much to my surprise, he was in a drama while making love. Mm. That had nothing to do with the girl, which called the daydream. Mm. That sounds very familiar. Why? It, it does? Well, then you know Harry Drogo de Vinci McGee. Yes. Well, then, is he making love? Well, He's getting into sexuality in order to carry on the daydream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The daydream has such attraction to him that he's going to impose that. Just curious. <clears throat> Just curious. You say, you, you know people like that? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, I asked him, what's the difference between continuing doing what you're doing and doing it without it? He said, I, I'm not interested in giving it up, so he left. Mm. <laughs> Loyal. The fantasy. Uh, perhaps you can answer it, since he left. What would happen if you, if you didn't have any thoughts and images occupying your mind while you were doing that? 
What? Who knows? What yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you speculate? <laughs> well, it would be um, at least. At least I can say that you you would really be with that person. Oh. Uh, oh. Very present. Oh. Say, uh, you know, I once did a study of some group of people in my old days. And uh, this group were involved in their problem was gambling. And so uh, I raised a couple of questions. I said, uh, <clears throat> I noticed in the discussion that several of the people in the group said they loved taking a bus to the gambling center. And a couple of others said, no, I go to the train. What do you think they were doing during the train and the bus? Probably looking out the window. I mean... They didn't even see the window. Oh. That was merely in the background. Oh. They must have been thinking. Yeah. They must have been fantasizing. Yeah. They're th they were thinking about what they're going to do with all the money that they're going to gain. Oh. They lived out a whole fantasy. That's why they needed not to drive. Right. Right. Otherwise they'd crash. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, it did, see, it didn't make any difference when they finally got in the ga gambling room. They already achieved what they wanted. Yeah. I was looking for The bus ride was probably the most interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does that fit? Hmm. Is that similar to my friend Dovidovich McGee? Yeah. It's uh, In what way? Well, but neither of them are actually there. Yeah, that's right. And oh also, and also, um, they're both caught up in pleasure and. They don't see the self. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> the image they have in themselves, would you agree, has to fit the drama of the daydream? Mm -hmm. So they're really engrossed in a vivid, mm -hmm. intense rehearsal right. that repeats rehearsal. itself again and again in a variety of ways. It's so rehearsed. Right. It's like the most rehearsed yeah, play in yeah, history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that word, rehearsal. Yeah, it is rehearsal, isn't it's it? Perfect. Daydreams are the rehearsal for human actions. It's a meditation, right? Yeah. No, no, that's fancy. <laughs> so, wait a minute. Uh, did you use the word integrity? Mm -hmm. How is integrity related to the story? Well, it's related in a good way and in a bad way. Good, good, go ahead. I like uh, that. The, the bad way is whatever their self-image is has perfect integrity with the drama that they go through. <coughs> is that true? Um, and there's an integrity to the whole. Mm. To the whole. No. Uh, but, uh, the good way is that... Um, If you were to see your problem um, like Jed did uh, through a midwifery talk and then um, stay with that understanding while going into an analogous situation, mm. that would be a very high level of integrity. Uh. Higher. 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 Uh, how's that related to uh, this curious word Barbie used, reality? Well, one is 
living out a false mm. image of reality, mm -hmm. and the other one is exploring <coughs> exploring reality. Ah. ah. In the loose sense. Right? Oh. oh. <laughs> Uh, would that be an antidote? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Very perfectly measured antidote. Ah. Yeah. Sure is. What? What was the antidote? Did we go back to the quote? What is that? What you meant? Uh, ask him. Um. I, I just the last part. I the antidote would be. Prescribed thing to do to see reality. Midway thought. But and then and then continuing into the experience to test your understanding in analogous situations, and through the pleasure, pain, desire, and fear, holding on to, or I don't know what how you want to say it, but at least. I'll say holding on to the self. I don't like the language, but I don't know how else to express it. The text uses preserve through pleasure and pain, desire and fear. Oh, the belief about what the lawgiver say to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. that, that, on that and only nice. that is dangerous. Mm -hmm. I have a question, which is uh, related to what we're doing here. It says the lie in words is an imitation of the state of the soul. Is that great? It is. It's one really of the great lines in Plato. Can you say that again? Sure. Um, it's on page 205 in, in that text, Gina. Um, it says 205? 205, the Rouse. I mean, the uh, not the Stephanus, the, the pagination. It says the lie in words is an imitation of the state of the soul. I found that fascinating. Or the state of the soul is influenced by the same thing. Yeah, they're right. They're kind of codependent to since the uh, yeah, what, I, I didn't remember what she said. What did she say? The lie in words is the the imitation of the soul. State. The state of the soul. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, uh, so, the power of logos. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. I, in what way? Uh, well, it's kind of like twofold, like in the power of logos to affect our self-image, and also how the self-image affects our logos, mm. the, the words we use. And, and put in the word imitate. Uh, right, the, our words imitate the state of our soul. Mm. Which in turn was was, which in turn was impacted by the transmission, yeah. right? Yeah. So that the transmission we received in the way we understood <coughs> a self-image, a worldview, and then when we uh, really project upon a beloved or right in or a gambling, the gambling fantasy upon the possible future results, isn't that also an imitation of? He thought that was enough of a question, so I stopped. <laughs> no, he was just pointing at you. He was what, pointing at you. What, you what were you saying? You were going to say imitation of. Well. Go ahead. I, I was just saying that we had the two the two examples: the man who fantasized rather than actually making love with a woman, and the the man who the men who who fantasize about the results of their gambling trip that they're going to take, right? that they're on their way to. And in each case, there's a... Uh, that fantasy has got to be the result of the imposition of a pathologos. But that is their own understanding of it, and it results in both a worldview and a, a self-view, which is the language I think you've, you've used, right? Self-image. So I was just kind of checking with Pierre kind of interesting. I, I like the whole idea of the state of the soul, because it's as if there's a whole state that arrives, or that is generated from a pathologist. See, the Greeks use this word, interesting word, 
it's for a habit, or, and it can be either habit or state. And it comes from the word to hold or possess. And that word, so they, I always took it that the idea was anything you do habitually results in a certain habituation to the soul. The soul becomes a certain nature and shape because of what you're doing. And, um, right, so, so um, that seems to be what we're talking about here. I was just kind of checking. Is the uh, uh, ha He's word him. habit and state, is that the same word in Greek? Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. What's, what's the word, Barbara? Uh, 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 uh. Habit and state. You don't know it. Uh, Eches, I think. Uh, epsilon, key, eta, sigma, I think is the word. Right now I don't. I haven't dealt with it for a long time. But I know it came off of um, echo, to have. Right? Mm. So, I believe, it, and if you, so if you look in the lexicon, a lot of times when they have state, like uh, probably when they have here state in the Greek, they probably have that word, meaning habituation. Mm. Right? Okay. It's really state interesting. <clears throat> because you, it's like you're, you're, you're rehearsing habiting yeah, yeah, right. and and every and you know that's what they say. Don't there's that whole beautiful after death thing that all you bring with you is your uh, education and nurture, right? Well, isn't there the other thing that when you go down to to be judged, you have to go free of your body and just with your soul, right? And the soul shows the marks of every unjust action you've done in your life, as well as it. so. What I find fascinating is that every unjust thing. I know that just booted you into okay. the mom thing. I, I, I'm, more, I'm more than happy to swap here. Yeah. So um, I was just thinking that, in a way, doesn't isn't that a habituation of a soul that your pathologos? You used to say that whatever name the reason we have fantasies and um, is because we haven't they're unjust names for the for the self or the soul, right? that the role you play in those fantasies, that's why you wake up from it, is that it's an unjust name. And in a way, isn't that saying that the condition of the soul upon your death, if you don't come to an understanding of what self, if you don't see self, you will uh, be reborn based upon that habituation. Yeah. 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 You're dissatisfied with it. I am. I want to kick that <laughs> answer in its butt. <laughs> well, just, it's like, so what? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> now, what can you pull out from the Duchess discussion? <clears throat> it, it's it's uh, highlighting the the reason why midwifery is so powerful uh, because of it's all in the words that we use it's all in the logos the, that quote about the lies being a, an imitation of the state of the soul I mean and I like that habituation of the soul like you can say that right mm -hmm. That's kind of, yeah I think so I, I like that she mentioned a curious term, uh, lawgiver. Lawgiver. I yeah, did. She did. Yeah. I'll and you didn't say anything about it. That's true. <laughs> and wait a minute, I suspect you were puzzled by it. I was, actually. And you didn't say anything. No, I didn't. Oh! Then at that moment, Ooh. you lacked integrity. <coughs> and or played out some. Right? Now recover. Habit. <laughs> All right. I'm rubbing my hands together. <laughs> <laughs> um, what up with that? <laughs> uh, well, we'll give a, uh, he, uh, well the, the book talks about the that there has to be. Oh, I'm going to call it a purification of education, a purification of, and we shouldn't allow for lies to be told about the gods, for example. And um, so the lawgivers are going to lay down norms for the creation of the stories which are told. Although there are stories that, are, that, that one could say, uh, like he, he gives the example of the castration of 
Zeus's castration of the Kronos. Um, and says that that should never be t never be said to children, right? Because they're going to get a false idea about what what they don't they can't understand myth in a way. Uh, Analogy. Ah, screw all that. Okay, lawgivers. The lawgivers are laying down the correct norms for the for for um for the, the stories that are going to be told to educate the youth, right? And the stories are that that God has to be described as the best and the most beautiful, abiding forever, simply in His own nature, never deceiving. For example, the so only cause of good. Mm -hmm cause of good, no cause of any evil. So, but the okay. whole true lie thing is on page 205, which you probably know, and it talks about um, that very phrase we're using. What's dangerous to have is to have um, a false image of the nature of reality. And they talk about it being in the kuriotatos, the highest part of the soul, the leading part of the soul, about those things <coughs> which lead you, hmm. right? or rule you. And they use some other word in the, in the English translation, but nevertheless, that's the word. It's like about the things which you use in guiding your own life, about the issues, and therefore about the nature of reality, what you can see. Because nobody wants a false image of the nature of reality in their soul. Okay, like, I think they talk about it as the vital part you, of one's being. They say vital, yeah. Yeah, and almost the and about the most vital things is what no one willingly chooses. So, no one fears. Uh, but, what would what would follow if you lived in a society that lawgivers laid this law down? <laughs> Wonderful because things. The way they lay it down <laughs> is in education. So therefore, it's what the youth are going to be then subject to as an object of their education. They're going to then, if there's a society that emerges from this, what kind of society would it be, you see? Very reflective. Society of philosophers. Kings, can you think? You'd never have to sleep with the light on. <laughs> There would be no fear. Or the door's locked. The house. Or it's always lit. Those are good, aren't they? There really are. There'd be no fear. That's. Barbara, there's some fruit ones here that are so different. You know, I just I'm kind of. So different from the world that we live in that it's hard to even imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. See. The, the first thing he mentions, of course, is that it's a power is released. This whole thing is to release a power. So, say, if you were to proceed with your view of integrity, would that add in, in any sense power? Yeah. In what way? Yeah. Thank you. You need water over here, Gene. What? Uh, it's a very u in a unifying kind of way. Oh, more. No coffee. When no coffee. Everything is treated as meaningful, and every moment is an opportunity to to be virtuous. Hmm. Uh, and. I mean, it's a very transformative idea. <coughs> That's power. Right? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Stealing someone's full copy. It is in power. Right? He said, following that curious path brings to birth a certain kind of power. And you're calling it the natural consequence of integrity. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be a very powerful state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the curious thing about Plato, 
is that in the whole description of the people and the allegory of the cave, the prisoners, he doesn't describe their state of mind in respect to daydreams. And yet, daydreams is the drama that goes on in someone's mind whenever they are doing whatever they are doing. And a certain set of them are repetitive. I think you saw that a moment ago. Now, what would it be like if they were dropped? There would be a lot of integrity. Yeah, yeah, I'm curious. A lot of power. A lot of um, power that was used up for daydreams would now be available for meaningful pursuits. And in essence it would be making uh, possible uh, <coughs> a kind of existence without daydreams or false images of the nature of the self because all daydreams contain as their basic principle a false image of the self. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Sounds like, that sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Well, that's why it's so attractive to so many people. <laughs> right? Uh, the ones we know. Yeah. Certainly. Only the best. <laughs> about this as an antidote. Does it fulfill the conditions of an antidote? Mm. Yeah, more and more, so. Mm. Mm. This is like an antidote laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> the Noetic Society. <laughs> Does, like, you mentioned that you thought that the words were, the, the state of the soul was the imitation. The words were then the creator of the, <coughs> of the soul, state of the soul? Well, I'm, I'm just trying, I was just wondering, um, this says a lie in words is an imitation of the state of the soul. Well, <clears throat> I thought you kind of corrected it and said, no, yeah, that's right. the state of the soul um, has... Which way do I have this? The state, the, the, the words create the state of the soul, not the state right. of the soul creating that's the right. words. Okay. Yeah. That's a minor correction. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, my question is, though... Wait a minute, then it would be the other way the around. Words. And it would be the state of the soul is an imitation of the lie in the word. Oh, pardon me? Then it would be the other way around. That would mean that the lie in the soul, the state of the soul would be an imitation of the lie in the words. That's equally true. Oh, both ways. Sure. Oh, so it's both ways. What do you, what do you think of that? It makes it easier to remember. Yeah. What do you think of that? <laughs> Mm. Like, so what? Like, what do you think of it? What is it? Well, then, words are um, important mm. for uh, your future and for rectifying your past. Yeah. And also... That, 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 that assumes a disconnect. Is there any point when we can say that the state of the soul is reflected in the veracity of the words. The veracity. Hmm. Veracity. I mean, well, truth. Is that truth. That's right. 
veracity is a major point. I mean, it, it's it's good from a midwifery point of view or a, a, a growth point of view to see that whatever you're saying is a, a reflection of a, a misconception, and the misconception is um, reflected in the words and back and forth, um, not necessarily causal, like, it, but but I think that is what Peter is saying. Well, it depends on what you mean, causal of what. Well, that, that the, the state of the soul is a reflection, but it's not a cause. The, the, the words are a reflection of the state of the soul, vice versa. But I don't think the words... Vice versa. Oh, okay. I don't know. It just... It just each is a reflection. I, I may need to work on it more. I like the idea, but... Um, I'm just thinking that there is what we're go, what we're aiming towards is a state of mind which is free from lies, That's right. and therefore, <coughs> and he just said, well, that would be a fun place to be, um, but that would also mean that the kind of dialogue and the kind of everything you express yourself would be genuine and true at all times, and the words would be a reflection. Of, the, of truth and, uh, uh, and you're calling it a state of integrity but um, no so each is uh, a it's, 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 it's you know thoughts come and go but that, that one came to me and I, I <laughs> so if each is a reflection of the other then wherein lies the false image if, if one is not a cause of the other, but merely a reflection of the other, then that would mean a third, some third place is where the false image lies, or the understanding, false understanding. Are you talking about the transmission? No. Uh, no, I think they can, I, I think it's like standing in a mirror. There's no third thing there. Um, it, it, it's mm. just... How do you break the mirror? Well, the question is for me, like, is it we, we look upon a scene and we want to have an integrity of our logos to the state of what we see? And either we look at it and we bring with us our pathologos, which is the set of axioms that describe the state we see, or can we actually look directly and see the state and come up with logos from our seeing, from our own integrity? Mm -hmm. Like... Can we actually view the moment without the sets of axioms and beliefs that we've come to habitually form our, our logos around? Mm -hmm. And if so, then then the, the logos would come from the state <clears throat> in that sense. And we would have to be empty to, to let the logos come out of that state rather than preconceived with our sets of axioms and beliefs from our pathologos. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Can you just summarize that? I don't know, it's on a video, that's for sure. In a couple of sentences. Well, I mean, do you either... At first you, I thought you were you saying your your logos <coughs> determines your frame of reference and determines what you see. Is that what you said? Do your you logos look determines? purely without a path of logos just to add something and then let the logos arise, or do you already bring your logos to it? Your path of logos, your sets of beliefs and your axioms and... Because like, in order to have integrity, wait, wait, wait. Let me answer first. Doesn't. <laughs> I think you bring your lo your path of logos. With so you then, mean. the words make the state. Whatever you're looking at, your path of logos transforms okay, the state. Okay, so you're doing <coughs> this third thing of looking at something, and perceiving something, along with your state and your lo path of logos. So that's. A f so I don't know. Are you looking for the source of the the state of the soul and the lies in the logos? I'm proposing that, yeah, there's a third source, that there's a source of both of those, yeah. Did you do that again? There's a third source that affects the lies in the words and the state of the soul. And that third thing would be what? 
Paul, they would listen. The path of logos. Your understand your path of yeah. Well, that would be the words of the the sick words of the sick. The, yeah, the path of logos. The path of logos, right? Yeah, she. It's, uh, it's uh, quite right. That's why I asked. Uh, but, uh, it's like early events have such power, mm -hmm. s such amazing power, that the highest experience that man is capable of can't touch it, won't alter it. Wow. It's nice. so pervasive that it, it, it covers every event, it clouds every judgment. It's an amazing power. It carries on from one generation to the next and the next and the next. It has its own it has its own power. psychic parasite. It feeds off human activities. It's not just an idea. It's next to the good. In terms of its power, its magnificence, continuation, and what's the difference? Goes on from generation to generation, has an eternality to it, in that sense. And philosophical midwifery can't can't touch it. Pardon me. It's the only philosophical thing can. midwifery can't touch it. It's the only thing that can touch it. Oh. It's not only generations. Fasting doesn't do it. Meditation doesn't do it. The Walking out of samadhi feet. doesn't do it. No. 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 Right? Only understanding. Nope. <coughs> it has its own logos. Mm-hmm. To assure that that is continued okay. into the next generation. And it's likely to be the mm -hmm. cause of the extinction of the human race. <laughs> so then, are you in agreement that that path of logos reflects the lie in the words as well as the state of the soul? No. No. Unless you, it depends upon what you're calling the state of the soul. I don't know. What kind of state of soul, in other words, since that admits of degrees and values and qualities. Hmm. 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 In, this, in this quote, he's, yeah, go ahead. in this quote, it's one deceived. Pardon me, louder. One deceived, since the lie in words is an imitation of the state of the soul. So, oh, if it's one deceived, oh. that's right. It's one deceived. That's the pathologos. Oh, so that's the when the words would be the lie in the words that. That's when the lie in the words would manifest, or you would manifest lies in words. That's how I see it. There's no, your words are, don't have integrity. And, but, but if you're not deceived, then your words do have integrity? You know, there was a so. serial killer that was interviewed by a psychiatrist that was on one of these TVs some uh -huh. years ago. It's a great story. This this guy would use a screwdriver. Oh God! Right? <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Put it in yeah. front of the woman so yeah. as if she was taped and couldn't move, mm -hmm. and say, "If you don't look at me, I'm going to pierce this eye of yours with this screwdriver." right now. Oh. If you're not willing to look at me, I'm going to scramble your brains yeah, and what, then I'll do it with the other eye. Oh, oh. Thanks. Thanks. 
By the way, uh, the psychiatrist unfortunately didn't ask, say, is it possible that your life with your parents, they never looked at you? They ignored you totally? Oh, okay, yeah. I was trying to get your coffee. <laughs> well, without without disrupting the sentence, but it wasn't working, jumped, jumped, and the jumped, coffee was getting colder. Jumped, jumped. I will. Right? That's yeah. the power of it, isn't it? There it is in one story. He's living out. He's living out that drama. So they'll look at him if they have to kill him first. <laughs> right? Kill him second. Film second, yeah, I'll have to tell you if I look at you. But what if... There's some studies on this North Korean dictator. Uh-huh. And they're saying his whole life there's only mm -hmm. one person he hated, that was his father, who had never had anything to do with him. Just a topic? Uh -huh. Yeah, please, thank you. So he'd be happy to destroy the world in revenge. What about Trump? <laughs> That's what I've heard. I didn't make that up. Mm. Like man's faith, man's entire faith is dependent upon waking up. And that's only going to happen if the state, through its laws, introduces these ideas in one's education so that it can be a global phenomenon. That's what played us during the Republic. That had to be a radical change of education. Because as of now, education is a set of tasks that one who well, becomes yeah, educated it, it would, knows. Yes, it would. Rather, yeah. than, rather than like a state that one is educated into. We have no idea in our education of what is an educated person. It's, it's a That's set true. of tasks that one can do. No. Rather than like you're educated if you know how to live this way right. in the That's state. Right. No model for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean there is no idea of that at all. A moral model. Period. I, I don't. I've never heard that. Like, and if anything, it's secondary. Mm. It's like, hey, we want to show them they're loved and they can be open and respected mm. and they can be themselves. By the way, now what are our test scores? Well, there is that that model from um, that play I'd like with to the have Ethiopians. A so what? Uh, that play that Pierre talked about. Uh, That's what it needed in this Oh, oh. Yeah. That would be a model. Oh, they're the Ethiopians who proved that oh. they are uh, Hellenic? There's some blue people. Yeah. Because yeah. of the like way the they're <laughs> the way being. Uh huh. Because of their they integrity, they would them. rather die than uh, suffer a marriage they didn't want. They'd rather have love by heart than by hand. Well, it was an education that you could see in their way of being, um, and not by, you know, entering the group with their skills. And also transcending race. Mm. Say, so what is your opinion about the destiny of man? Oh, I have no opinion at the moment. You don't have any? No. Oh. Are you expecting to get one? I am. I'm oh, expecting okay. to get one maybe in a day. Oh, I'll be <laughs> he's um, he's, I have a question for you. He's multiplying faster than he's learning. Who's that? Which he's is... No, oh, well, actually, I was going back to the <laughs> jumping off point of um, Logos is an imitation of state or state is an imitation of Logos. And, or coffee, and I re and I reflected finally. At first, I couldn't figure it out because it sounded like it was saying, "When you speak, that creates a condition of soul." And while that might be true, mm. it didn't seem well. I don't know. What I then then what I started thinking about was the words you use in your self-talk. Those words definitely bring about a condition of soul, right? They bring you down, they knock you off your task because you buy into them. So, I, I, I don't know if there's a question in there, I guess not. I was just, I was seeing the power of the Logos uh, as we use it, or the power of the path of Logos, 
as we use it against ourselves in sure. conditioning our soul, so to speak, resulting in states of mind, which is what I'm calling at this point the condition of the soul. The loss of energy, all of that. So in the same way then, the way that we talk to ourselves could maybe also lift ourselves up? That is a question. <laughs> No, only because I was listening to KPFK, which one can do, and they had this guy, they were talking about this guy, and the amazing thing about the two people talking is they never talked about the cost of the program, that was a two-day seminar, and it was, and it was, you, the guy talked about shifting the body in order to attain goals through, through shif shifting the talk. But you have to shift the body, and what he meant by shifting body was when he had a chance to, inc to buy, get this big thing going for his business, his, what he called his body was saying, don't do it, you need that money for something else. But he, <coughs> but he shifted his body and went for it anyway, and it turned out to be a, a turning a corner kind of a thing. And um, it just, um, the reason I'm bringing that up is I'm fascinated by the idea that people think you can just positive language yourself into growth. You know, just, you know, like Shazam, like, I am a good, look in the mirror, I am a good person, I have energy, I can achieve my goals. Affirmations. All the affirmations, which in a way was what this guy was underlying his position. What do you think? I well, think that that is both true and untrue, because it does have some effect to change who you are temporarily, but it's not going to actually ever uncover what you don't know. So insofar as you think you know something secretly in your path of logos, you can't achieve success or virtue or integrity because you're going to play out what you already know. So to that extent, it, it's only so far of a treatment. It gets you out of maybe a moment. But all yeah, but th that's exactly. But all the truths that you still think are true that you don't know that sabotage you are still there. Mm. It's like in teaching again, like a student can, up, can come up to me and say, "How do you do this?" And I can give them step by step the five steps how to do it. And then they'll come back again ten minutes later and be like, how do you do this? I'm like, I fucking just told you how to do it. You don't remember? But after five years, I realized, no, they don't remember because they don't know what they don't know yet. Yeah. They can't take knowledge and even knowledge of what is the proper sense of self <coughs> and guide themselves. So they're, they're still left stuck. They, they haven't cut, uncovered that which they don't know yet. And so to that extent, they have to still find the mystery and the puzzle and the deception. Mm. You know, the deception within themselves. Like, it's not enough to know that you don't know and, and, know, and then be told what to know. You have to come to know exactly <laughs> what you don't know. <laughs> like, inwards. So I don't think, this, I think the self-talk stuff only goes that far. Mm. That's why you need midwife free. Like, you need... Now, I have to wonder, can you midwife yourself? And, uh, and that, that comes down to how can, you, how can you discover what you think you know that you don't know? <laughs> so. Yeah. You have mad hair. That's why well, I'm shocked for a moment. Well, like I mean, Einstein. There we go. That's what about to okay. Artemis? I mean, that is essentially a, a do-it-yourself midwifery program. I have never tried it. So you... But that's way higher than this kind of popularized method of... I, I, I think about this all the time because I, I write down the statements that are coming up and I try to do the midwifery for myself. And I'll admit it surely doesn't work if you're not very careful and you gotta like really almost record like a dream record yourself speaking and then listen to it like sort of and take yourself or take your you have to play two roles you have to play the midwife and you have to play you in the path of logos and you almost have to be able to separate that <coughs> like schizophrenic style uh, that's, a, that's a wrong choice of words, but it's... Say hallucinogenic style. Say what? Hallucinogenic style. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. What do you say to that? Is your, 
I've often heard you say no, that you can't midwife yourself. Then I remember you saying once that it is possible on a, on a certain level, or that if you have, that, that you can. Um, do you have a yes or no, or do you have, is it like somewhere in between? Would you mind repeating that? I want to make sure I understand. Can you midwife yourself? No, 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 no. Just repeat what you just said. Is it yes or no? No, no, no. It's the thesis that you're presenting. Um, what I said earlier about yeah, playing two like roles? Yeah, three or four. I'm not sure exactly how many. That's why I wanted you to repeat it. Well, I was offering a, a solution to his question of can you midwife yourself, but his question was addressed to you and you never answered it. And I think I remember... <coughs> what question was not answered? <clears throat> um, can you midwife yourself? And um, I seem to remember you saying both yes and no, but I... No, I doubt it. Um, Probably the circumstances were different. justified it, but in principle... In principle, no. It was your, is your typical answer. Oh. Yeah. What follows then? Well, it just follows on how hard you try to, to nail down the logos that because of the belief that you're holding, you're always going to see through it. Like, the, like it, means you can, it means that to grow, you have to relate to someone else. Or you can't do it yourself. You need a dialogue. Dialogue is the condition for getting out of all pathologies. The difficulty in trying to get out of it yourself is that the terms you're going to use are going to be itself already suspect. Right, but, th th but therefore can't you cannot <coughs> see what you think is already true. But can, false. Can't, can't you write that down? Hmm? But so what I was saying is, is that that's why you need to separate the two roles. What you, you roll? The midwife and, and you. So like, for example, sure. like you write, the, what, you write down your, like you could just play the role of the midwife and then play the role of your, your own self and you could write out what you think the problem is and then step back and as a midwife. Nobody, nobody knows what myths they are harboring in their soul until they go through a dialogue and discover it themselves. Right, but can it be a self-dialogue? How can you do it if yourself, if you yourself think what is true is false? That's why I say you have to, that's why, that's why I say you have to play both roles. Unless there's a, a dialogue part of us that's open, a part of us that's open to the Logos, a part of us that's open to Providence. Well, of course, self-critical analysis is good, you know, certainly it's good, but it's a question of how deep can it go. Right. Well, because you're looking at the thing with the state of the lie of your soul already. Like, you're trying to understand the, the state of the soul with... But then the trick is... You don't is, know the logos that you're already making but then the, the state from, right? But that's why I say then the trick is to then bring yourself out of that and play the role of the midwife. So, so you, you have a separate state from the state of the soul? You, yeah. And you have a separate logos from the state of the logos? Well, the, the questions are always the same, soul? right? So you just, you would just follow the method. Oh, I, I have the methods pure. The method is pure itself. But what, what we were saying is the person using the method isn't pure. Because they bring with them their secret subset of axioms and logos that but they you, don't even know But you know. could still ask the same questions that the midwife is going to ask, record your own answers, and then follow through on them just like the midwife. Isn't if there you, a part of the self, though, that always... Isn't there a part of the pathologist that kind of keeps us hidden from the thing that will... That's why I say, us? yeah, it's difficult. Like, there's a, there's a defense <coughs> mechanism. Like, we don't even see it happening so fast we get directed from yeah, the, the I, thing of integrity, right? Like... <coughs> I've watched every one of us do midwife talks here, including myself, and I've watched every one of us dodge the one idea that we need to reflect on. Every single one of us, you know, is like, no, that's not important, but what about this? And take somebody like, no, 
Stay right here. <laughs> Don't run away. So do you think that, in one sense, we have that power to hold ourselves? To, to some degree. I don't know if that's what he's calling self-critical and uh, examination and not as deep as midwifery. But it's something I try to do constantly to myself because especially I wasn't around here so much. Especially why? Because he's not around here so much. Oh, well, and all those people going up into the mountains for years at a time doing the hermit thing. You know, like sitting for years at a time trying to attain Satori or pure enlightenment. <laughs> you know, I need to set time to have been my talk with you, by the way. Just I, I, something I want to do. But I am very... Um, I, I constantly am trying to midwife myself, and I'd say the only reason I, I really think it might be possible is because I did get a breakthrough, and I saw something about my mom, and it was related, but, you know, fair enough, it was related to our last midwifery talk that I had a year ago before I left, so it was connected to a midwife talk. And then, then it's connected with the midwife talk. But you, 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 you kept focusing. Yeah. Therefore, yes, it does follow that, that after a particular exploration to continue the implications of that in your whole life. And yes, it will generate new insights. And you don't necessarily need a midwife for that because you already have a fundamental insight. Mm -hmm. And you want to see how that spreads itself out throughout one's whole life. So it's like you need at least one midwife talk. You what get at least one midwife talk. Well, that insight could just cultivate my itself. My first experience of midwifery was on mushrooms. And I didn't well, have... You, you I were, never you, even heard of the midwifery group. You were, you, oh. you were on them or your experience? I was on them. And my mind was like, you will look at these three scenes in your life. And it forced me to look at these three scenes in my life before I could think of anything else. So, and it brought me to an insight about the way that I related to, my mom related to my dad, and I related to my sister, and then how I related to my friends. And I watched this self-image play itself out, and I had to go through and be birthed of it. Now, I haven't had too many experiences since then <laughs> where I was able to be midwife through that, but it is possible, unless we think the self is deficient, like, and I love the idea that we need somebody else, because to me that makes our human relationships way more interesting and necessary and important, that's for sure. sure. But if we're born incomplete, then it's like we need a Jesus figure or some... Well, some what you said, I mean, we don't, we're not born with midwifery method, right? We don't pop out the method in our mind. So if we had never come across midwifery, then the 7 billion... 7.3 billion of us that have never heard the word philosophical midwifery are faded? Uh, Barbara mentioned something about um, yeah. earlier about uh, uh, carrying with you what you nurtured and educated into the next life. And, and I forget your exact word. You didn't even like your answer, but I liked it a lot. When you that when you die, that the only thing you take with you is your education. And right, and that, then th that's the transmigration of the soul into the rebirth of the next Making body. Making the choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the thing that thing you have to keep in mind, though, that what is it that will manifest a battle over? Mm. It, under right similar now, circumstances, we life. expect similar outcomes. What? Under similar circumstances, if, if, a man, if, a path of, if your path of logos is manifesting, it means you've hit similar circumstances to the, the transmission scene. Right? Under similar circumstances, we well, expect similar... What you're saying is true, but it doesn't answer the question. Maybe I misunderstood the question. Can you say it again? Yeah, what you're saying is true, but it didn't answer the no, question. No, what was the question again I'm asking? <laughs> How can you manifest right now a path of it? Con willingly, consciously. How can I manifest it? What would you say? That's a path of uh, Pursue the most meaningful goal. What? Uh, pursue your most meaningful goal. Sure. Oh. The higher, the more? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Attending to this conversation. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, so what kind of things would you then engage in? Well, if one wanted to manifest it, see it emerge. <coughs> Whatever is you're most passionate about. It can't be secondary, though. It has to be. I, I say, the, the most challenging, the hell of the, the passionate stuff. Okay. If you really wanted to challenge your. Yeah. Yeah, what would you do? Right now, I would master drumming. What? Drumming. What's it called? Music, drumming. Pardon me, what? Drumming. Forget that. Forget that. Oh, thank you. Uh, right. <laughs> that was close. Parmenides. Uh, even the question. Yeah. Why, par <laughs> why Parmenides? Um, actually, right now I'm interested in the Republic, but let's go with Parmenides. Because it's, um, it's the most, um, it's the most challenging and at the same time most meaningful and thing the, I can think of. If that's true, uh, how do you see that it is doing that very thing? Because whenever, because whenever I take on that <coughs> challenge, it, uh, it it brings up it brings up all of those. It brings up. Mm. Daydreams and problems. So, are you then saying that's essential to this game called midwifery? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, that's. I see. That's the. Yeah. yeah. That's the the fire. That's the the wood. I don't know. What was what was the that? Uh, the ch challenging yourself with something very meaningful brings up, the very highest level brings up daydreams and fantasies. Those then provide the wood for the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I quite got the end of that. I just lost the end of it. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey, Julie? No. Uh, are you familiar with the Diamond Sutra? You know, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Been a while, did, she that go, did she go through something? Yeah. yeah. Let's, see, she did. let's see if we can get it again. Uh, I get my Hi, secrets Julie. mixed up. <laughs> um, yeah. You've been into it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other people you know have been into it? Mm hmm. Oh. What's the difference between getting into the Parmenides and the Diamond Surgery? Oh, hmm. Because is it not true mm -hmm. that many regard the Diamond Sutra as one of the great philosophical, meaningful sutras? Well, and I was reading the other day the, the first, it's the oldest written word Primary text, in the world. Right? It yeah. comes probably out of Narcajona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Well, hmm. You know, Diamond Sutra. What? The Diamond Sutra has. fairly simple. It's kind of like poetry, while the Parmenides is more like a. intricate scaffolding or something that's really. requires some hard work to understand. Diamond Sutra is more like a. Fewer terms, and um, I find it very fun, but it's not so complicated, complex as Parmenides. So what? So what? Um, how did you find it? Uh -huh. <laughs> you find it? You've been into it. I don't know where you're going with this, but. What does it do to you? 
mm. to go into the Parmenides and try to understand it. Mm. What does it do to you? Because mm. naturally, you have this background in the Diamond Sutra. Right. Yeah. 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 But what does it do to yeah. study the Parmenides? Yeah. Um, it really, <laughs> it's, um, It's, um, I would say, very sobering, sobering, and I have to try to clear away everything to get to the basics, to get to the fundamentals, and then yeah. kind of reconstruct it. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. fun. Well, what does that do? To you. It's, um, you well, gave, by the way, you did give partial explanation. I just thought you could add to it. it. The clarity I get from doing that and the precision influences how I see everything in my life. Ah. My, everything becomes more precise and clearer and simpler. It, is there a struggle to stay in it and to go through it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Like you find it to struggle. Well, that's, that's the challenge is yeah, that's a challenge. to stay with it or go back to it and stay with it, yeah. Yeah. And there's so much to do. You have to really set up a schedule and do it like a habit. Make it a habit. Yeah. Like doing lessons, music lessons yeah. or something, you have to practice. Yeah. Uh, I had a discussion with Barbara the other day, and oh. uh, we were talking about what it would be like if you went back to North to uh, Korea and oh. gave a talk on Plato's Parmenides to the nuns and the priests in Korea. How do you think it would go? Remember that talk? Yeah, no. I thought it. Well, I really, we missed you. We want. That's why we're asking now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first of all, they don't speak English that well, so I, I don't think it would go well first for at any level. But uh, no, it's an interesting the, idea. Look, consider the most ideal circumstances, oh. right? Rather than the so-called average. Well, yeah. Well, they're not into words that tightly in the pardon, Buddhist pardon. tradition. You're dealing with a, a nice, sophisticated group. They've all reached a certain state of mind. They have a certain discipline behind them, and they're capable of entering into the point you're going to be raising. That's what do you think true. it's going to do to them? Hmm. Well, I think it might give them a good question, and we'll maybe rock their foundations a little bit. A little bit. And uh, a little bit? maybe they'll go to their masters and ask some questions. That no, no, would... let's assume they are the masters. They are the masters. Oh, those guys. Okay. Huh. Well. Well, what did it do to Myobong Sunim when you, did you ever present him? <laughs> what did it do to him? <laughs> Some years ago, how many years, 20? Uh, 30. 30. <laughs> 1987. Uh, well, 35. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I got in to talk with Milbaum, so, Yeah. and he said, Pierre, you are a teacher. I said, no, I'm not. All I do is help people read. Yeah. He said, no, you really are a teacher. I said, only of reading. Yeah. He said, I'll, uh, I'll prove it. I said, go ahead. He said, I'll translate the Diamond Sutra, and give you a copy, you won't have more than five minutes, maybe three, before you have to give a, get up and talk about it. And I'll show you. 
Go through it, you'll see you're, uh, you are a teacher. Mm. I said, wait a minute, I'll make a deal with you. Mm. You take on the Parmenides, and you go before the NS group, and you give a talk about Parmenides and its relation to the Diamond Sutra. He said, you're on. Oh, okay. <sighs> Right, I figure that's going to be one hell of a good discussion, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So one Monday, well, it was a Monday night, and I used to teach Monday night at Golden West College. It was a holiday. So I went over to the temple, and no one was there. No. But I said, it's probably, up, probably upstairs. So I made my way upstairs. And who did I see? I don't know. Alan DeWeber. Alan Weber. He had a copy of the Parmenides, and he's teaching him. <laughs> he's teaching him. <laughs> I'm lecturing teacher. him about the Parmenides. Oh, okay. I said, "That's it, kid. Cheating. It's over. This is Man. cheating." <laughs> Who's Alan Weber? Some guy. <laughs> that knows uh, the Parmenides. Al Alan Weber was you know, a, a member of the early group, um, kind of a know-it-all, um, uh, really was into getting degrees and recognition and going through various steps of confirmed mastery, being a teacher, going to college, getting all, and, and, but basically what it was was a used car salesman. And, and kind of a dick. Ah, uh, well, he, he was awful, yeah. kind of awful guy. So, my, so Mile Bong knew and there, him. There, there was, how, was so there. Mile Bong knew him and could call him and be like, "Hey, I, I got this assignment from Parmenides. I'm Parmenides, and I need some help." And 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 Al Weber took it up because <coughs> it gave him an opportunity to be what right. he is, which is a knower. And he was That's part so of curious. the group that was functioning at the at the mm. temple. He took on. Oh. He he, took, yeah. he got the ropes and right, right. Uh huh. I had just recently got a job, so I wasn't a part of that. I was <laughs> but wait, wait, wait! I want to stick with Pierre's question because I like it, and uh, his question to Julie about how they might respond over in in the uh, temple in Korea if she did this. Um, but I also remember, and 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 so Pierre told this story also. But I also remember reading from your son's book. Pardon here. me? Uh, didn't Joe have a book about uh, what happened up in the... Uh, Mountain Zendo. The, the Mountain Zendo, right? Mm -hmm. And how... Uh, and of course, you did this with Alan and Watts' group as well. Go and just have a walk with, with people in between the sashims, right? And um, I think there's a place in the book, isn't there? Please correct me, anybody, where... One of the monks says, uh, hey, I think we have more than one um, Roshi here, right? Oh, yeah. So how do they, resp how do they respond? When, like, like, put it on Julie again. What if she went to Korea and instead of giving a talk, instead she takes walks with him and does midwifery? Uh, that was Yashitani Roshi. Okay. Mm. How, do, how do they respond when you do that? Look, that's it. They can see all the openings that's around it. No, you. No. They can see that it's... Uh, it was there. It was their role to ask me. They didn't do it. He voiced that to my Zooming, and I got it back okay. through the Zoom, my Zooming. So you only heard it indirectly? Yeah. They never approached you and said, hey, can I try some of that stuff? Not only that, you see, on some of those uh, sessions we went into, uh, People would get in crises and walk around and pop, they pop, pop. And so in one session, I think there were eight people busted through and got ten shows. And this Roshi then said, this is the greatest session I've ever had in my life. Corey Roshi. But? No, no, not but. There's no but. No, a lot of so there's you. Dusty Tommy said. and Corey Roshi, two different guys. So, did, did he have any interest in midwifery? No, I think that would have been a good point, but it wasn't asked. It wasn't volunteered. So one could ask, why not? Yeah, I would like to, but they're not around, unfortunately, to answer it.
Was that a lack of integrity at that time? Pardon me? Also? Well, what? Was that also at that time a lack of integrity? Uh, okay. You're good at that. Yes. Yeah, so you say yes. He's the man who has an insight and integrity, that's which is why I wanted to ask him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, was bringing up the paramedics also a way of bringing up that that would bring out their pathologists? If you brought the paramedics to Korea or like what would happen? Or? I don't think so, that's not their goal. I don't think they're interested in that. Wait, wait, wait. Because we were asking also how does one yeah, bring out getting... their own pathologos? Right, and the and, necessity and of a meaningful um, goal. A meaningful goal, right? Because what would it take, what do you think of yourself if you were to master the paramedics? Or not yourself, what kind of person has mastery of the paramedics? Well, it, it would be a... Um, yeah. Yeah, know, he's asking. Eldar, that's Eldar's goal is the mastering the femininity. <coughs> I don't know what to make, make of that. I would have thought Julie had it as a goal too. Me too. I'm shocked to hear that. Me too. Especially after she gave such a great example of how working on the parmenides yeah. makes her whole state of mind for the whole day be more precise and profound. Well, it I'm does. adding That's profound. True. That's a very well, point I was thinking of. I, I'm, I have was, many goals. Is my <laughs> Josh was actually looking at you. <laughs> no, he my wasn't. eyes are actually he's, all he's across that <laughs> <laughs> That's that he's perception a trick. <laughs> no, I look at all of you. <laughs> it's uh, too bad, by the way, uh, more in your face. Me too. A friend of mine. Right. From what you just said. Well, it is a goal. Parmenides is, is a goal, but oh. it's the, my second goal. Well, what did you say? Maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> Before that. Oh, about I said the Koreans would not. Oh. No. You forget. You forgot. What you I said, said Elgar. That was Elgar's goal. Pardon me. I said that the Parmenides was Elgar's goal. For for mastery. But you, you said you have many goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's my response to it. I was sad to hear that. Really? Yeah. I should just have one? Well, a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I what? just remembered something. What do you remember? Yeah. Um, I was thinking that writing was my goal, but I remember now this conversation we had when you said, no, writing is never a goal. That's just kind of an outcome of your what happens when you do achieve your goal. So. Um, hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I never really thought about a work. Um, we had talked about the Republic before during yeah. Book Six. Yeah. Book Six of the Republic. Shadow off the subject. I've heard you say that you wanted to master the Parmenides. You have? Mm hmm. Hmm. It's a discussion. I think it's Saturday. One Saturday. Two. It's a crazy class to show up for if you don't want to master it. It's really hard. I mean, like, yeah. if, if your goal is not to master it, it's well, masochistic. Mm. Well, that's true. There's something I'm really, there's something I'm working on. Power what, what, what? There's nothing I'm working on more than yeah. the Parmenides so. stuff. Don't, shouldn't she? Oh, 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 oh. Whoa, that's whoa. interesting. That was very There's nothing, <laughs> There's nothing I'm working on more than the parmenides, so. But not knowing what is involved, we have no idea whether that's a good thing or not. Good catch. <laughs> but I have a question. Hmm. Didn't, did she not say that the people in Korea would not be interested in the parmenides and the insights she's gained? Well, Josh asked if it would bring up their pathologos, and I said, I don't think so, because I don't think that's their goal. And bring up a pathologos if you're... I was actually... But isn't that, that their pathologos? Isn't that 
isn't that their very personal pathologos limitation that they wouldn't be interested in a higher? We already settled for a less. You know, and say, oh no, oh you have a system that goes beyond ours? Nah, not interested. <laughs> <coughs> really? Yeah, in that way, I think so. So, if you have any goals, uh -huh. that's pretty interesting. Yeah. But yes. how are you approaching each of the goals that you have? Hmm. Well, for one thing, I'm setting up my life conditions differently. So I'm, I have the conditions Tell me, to. How are you approaching each of the goals that you have? That's uh -huh. my question. Do you want me to list them and tell you for each one how I'm, no. I suspect you're approaching them all the same. You can approach all your goals with the ideal of excellence, couldn't you? Uh, I'd like to agree to that. Well, if you did, then you'd only have one goal. Just hmm. excellence. Yeah. Sure, what that means in your life. In my life, like, let's say I have a goal to do music too. So how could I come up with a general statement of excellence, um, or if, in terms of my diet? How could I come up with a general statement of excellence that applies to diet, music, and yeah, okay. see, uh, I'm, I'm not very good at that. I just thought maybe you'd like to know that you could do all of your goals with the goal of excellence in each, and therefore you'd only have one goal, excellence. Mm -hmm. And you're raising some very interesting questions. Mm. And uh, there's a sense in which I don't believe what you're saying. Okay, well I do have... Uh, hold it. What okay. do you think what I just said? You have to listen. No, I do. What did I say? Well, you're wondering how I, how I could have that... I said I didn't believe you. Yeah. Shouldn't that require some response on your part? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give that now. Like, uh, I do want to do each one in the best way. I'd approach each one in the best way. But do you, do I thought you, that each would be Do different. you not have an idea of how to achieve those with excellence? I do. See, so. Oh. See, that's oh, okay. Easy. Yeah, See. I do have that in mind. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Gotta go. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.